Hello friend humans, Lucas Levy Keppel here, and boy do I have something exciting for today. Yes, that's right, this is a new television set that I'm going to install right here in the garage. That doesn't sound right, or like me, or what I do at all. Now, as you probably guessed, this is not a television. In fact, the top of the box says, do not lay flat. This is a correct frame size bicycle. If you're unfamiliar with bicycle assembly, have a professional bicycle mechanic put your bike together. It actually says bike on the top, even though there's a giant television that says fragile on it. Very interesting packaging. We'll get into that in just a bit. Now, I am not a professional bike mechanic. In fact, this will be a first time for a lot of things for me. First unboxing, first putting together of a bike, and I'm sure I'm going to make mistakes. Lots of mistakes. But I hope that you'll join me for this ride that we'll be able to uh, figure out some of those mistakes and whatever I do wrong, maybe you will learn from it and be able to do it right. As you could probably tell from the video title, this is a Poseidon X in this box, and we'll take a look at how it's packaged and uh, how we put it together in the process, how long it actually takes to do this, especially if you're someone like me who is not an experienced bicycle mechanic and yet would love to order one of these direct-to-consumer bicycles. Okay, so let's begin this process. Same thing on both sides of the top flap then. Ooh, smells of new rubber. <laughs> All right, so that's the bike neatly packaged inside. You can see the tires are separate. I think, yeah, they're definitely very flat as you would expect. You wouldn't want to ship something that with, with filled up tires, I mean. Then you're just adding air to the package. All right, let's see if we can get it out of here, hey? All right, a little bit of foam. I'm gonna to try to keep all the packaging that I can here. Never know when it'll be useful to ship a bike. that's everything in the box here. There's a box in the box. Okay, let's take a look first at what was inside the box here, because as you can tell, there's not really any instructions on what to do next. Now there are online, but let's see if they gave us any hard copy. So, it is a box with a paper on top. Did I open it upside down? I don't know. I don't think so. Poseidon, thank you for purchasing your new bike. We hope that it brings you many happy miles to come. For a full user manual, which includes assembly instructions and details, uh, I'm sorry, detailed product information, uh, head to poseidonbike.com slash etc. And then we have, once again, we strongly recommend that you use a bike mechanic. Well, that's fair. I may have one check over my work, but this is part of the fun. What is this? Frame protector. Um, apply these to the right spaces on the bike. Okay, cool. Pedals, not the first thing we're gonna put on, but They've got a little bit of heft to them. They're composite with little pegs. It's nice. And we have quick release axle. And looks like reflectors. Cool. All right. This is a rotor guard, right? Yep, protects the rotor that's actually installed already. I was thinking I might have to reinstall or, or install the rotor on the wheel, but looks like we won't have to do that. That's where the disc brakes. So I guess let's get the seat post off first. <laughs> Look at 
that seat. It's got a very long nose on it. Be interesting to see how comfortable it is once we get it on there. All right, looks like this is the front wheel. Yeah, this is the front wheel. So I disconnect it at three points. Three points. Looks like we can get that off. Sounds like somebody's here. Come back to this in just a moment. So I've been joined by a few people here, but we're gonna try with some extra hands to pull this off since I couldn't get it with just my two. So hey. there we go. Victory. It worked a lot better with someone else helping. All right. So front wheel. We'll get back to that in a moment. When you drop the cardboard, it's not too heavy. <laughs> Still has a shield on it, or two. <laughs> yeah, that's the rotor protector. Mm -hmm. Captain America. <laughs> Extra protecting. Yeah. All right. Are you sure those valves are long enough? <laughs> that's that's quite long. They're prepared for all comers. <laughs> when you ride your bike with no handlebars. Yeah. You want to keep your fingers for the record. I do. I want to keep my fingers too. There. Yeah. Nice color. We've got this to a point. I could probably put this on the bike stand. Hey. <laughs> That's what that was. It was the pedal crank that it was stuck on. I'm trying to figure that out. It is a big deal. The mechanic and his low weight calendar system. That's you. <laughs> I'm not actually helping you. Just standing here. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I should not feel hard thing beneath the razor blade. I might put my first scratch on it. <laughs> Did I? I don't think so. Ah. Formally. Let's go. Uh, oh. I just, uh, no. No, well, I <sighs> Really curious to see this 10 seat boot pack. Yes. This was a, well, you actually get to see the thing. The project for some wrapping, taking a gift for a oh. What is that? That looks like a protector for the derailleur. Oh, that doesn't Shipping live there because no. it looks um, it so. So protect it when it's on the rack. Sinking the seat tube. Looks like there's actually a little grease in there. That's good. Another thing. Stick the seat in the car when you're traveling a long distance and put the cap back in. Also a possibility. Okay. Out. Enjoy your enjoy your stabbing and revealing. And, and I'm pretty sure it's revealed already. Mm -hmm. More fun to come. Well, you're revealing all the time. You know, it's new new discussions. Okay, to the house. <laughs> this is excessive grip wrap. I feel like it's just the right amount of gift wrap. <laughs> I would not want this thing to arrive with no padding. No, that's true. <laughs> like that. I want to save this. Yeah. That's nice. This is a piece for the front fork to keep it the right distance apart so it doesn't fall, uh, collapse in while under transit. That's definitely something we want to keep. <clears throat> with that off, that one slid right off. Thank you. Just whittled that a little bit. <laughs> Not the fork itself, though, fortunately. Just the packaging. There's the stem. Oh! The stem cap is really nice. Not a detail I normally would notice on things, but. Oh, that's clever. Okay, when I last left you, the uh, we had some helpers. They've left. And uh, I was showing you the stem cap up here, which will make more sense once we get it all together. I was just excited to show details. Unfortunately, when the camera runs out of batteries, you can only do so much. Meanwhile, let's go back to the uh, unwrapping process here. 
making the sound, but it's not actually doing the thing I want it to do. Which is cut. There we go. Alright, that's all the frame. Ooh, pretty. Now let's get these uh, handlebars. Gotta be careful uh, taking these particular ties off. I do not want to cut the brake line. Hmm. Brakes have a little red piece on them. That's interesting. Probably shouldn't squeeze the brakes. Okay, note to self. Be excited, but don't do all the things yet. All right. That is one bike unwrapped with zero injuries. Okay. You've got a cover on too, don't you? There was a little cap on the tube and I needed to pull the cap out. So I guess I pulled it from this side. And then uh, turned out that there was a little bit of grease in there, which makes sense. You want to keep the pieces greased. That quick release skewer uh, just slides through. I had to take the cap and one of the springs and put it on the other side so that there's a spring and a cap on either side. Now, line up the brake. push until it makes an imprint in your hand. That seems to be on there. It's rubbing on the brake a little bit, but that's to be expected since it hasn't been dialed in yet. Okay, that's better. We've got it aligned. We don't longer have it rubbing on the uh, frame up there. It's a good indicator you've got it the wrong way if it's doing that. Now it is still rubbing on the brake, so we're going to have to figure out how to fix that. But one thing I did notice this time that I that probably should have been an indicator to me, all of the cables um, go into the same side and that's all on the left hand side, what they call the, the non-drive side of the bike. So we've got the brake and all of the cables going in on that side. Except if you've got a dropper post which would go on the little side, uh, other side. But we're all lined up now. Seems to be pretty nice actually. I suppose we'll see just how well it's aligned in just a bit, but. Well, pedals or seat posts? Let's do seat posts next. Mm. There we go. Opening the seat post. I don't really have a good height for it yet, so I'm just gonna put it there. I thought there was grease in there, but it doesn't look like there is. That'll be something I'll add. <laughs> I'll add in post. Uh, Seth from uh, Seth Bike Hacks slash Berm Peak um, had a really good video on how to tell the, the torque that you're putting on something. Uh, and it was like four is just like finger tight, five um, is about as tight as you can get it by hand, uh, six is you're, they're making an impression, and uh, seven and eight um, basically you, you need to have a little bit more. Uh, torque than you've got. So I, I didn't tighten that all the way up. I know it'll be important for the seat post later, but for now um, I'm just going to leave it as it is until I can get things moving. Now let's talk about pedals. One thing I do know about pedals uh, is that there is a right and a left pedal, which seems like an important information to know. Um, and that is labeled on the pedal with a little R and a left, or L. R and L. And that will help us to determine which side of the bike they go on. Now why is that important? Well, pedals, because they do so much spinning, need to go on the bike um, in such a way that they don't take that stuff off. Uh, need to go on the bike in such a way that they don't um, unscrew themselves as you're riding. 
So they need to go on in such a way that they fit properly. And to that end, we're going to put this pedal uh, always turning towards the front wheel of the bike. And that's true for both sides. And these definitely want to be in solidly once they're there. So if you're doing this yourself, you might want to use a different tool. <laughs> I've seen these be installed so much faster. Once again, this side will still spin it towards the front. can. At least I got a little bit on there. The other thing I'm told is that one of the pedals, the left one, has little grooves on it, whereas the right one is completely flat on the nut that you're turning in. So keep that in mind too. Okay, we have pedals. We have uh, just about every piece on the bike. So the next thing is going to be to tune it up, make sure that we're getting it ready to go. Hello friends, Lucas Levy Keppel here, and it has been about a month, but I wanted to show off the bike as it is in the manufacturer capacity. This is the Poseidon X, as the uh, specs come from Poseidon Bikes. This saddle is the one that was provided by the manufacturer, and I have to say that it is not very comfortable at all. I tried riding it very briefly, and found that uh, it was not to my satisfaction. But uh, everyone has their own decision about what a saddle is going to be right for them, and so that's probably going to be the first thing that I change on the bike. The Poseidon X uses the Advent X by MicroShift. It is a 1 by 10 system, that is one chain ring here, that's one gear up front, and 10 speeds in the cassette at the rear, as a 1x10 system, it's a little bit less mechanically difficult to use than uh, a multiple chainring bike, something that used multiple chainrings in the front, like my old bike did. Now, one of the things I do like about this very much is that it does have a clutch on the derailleur, uh, which means there's a little bit less chain slap. But just in case, um, the manufacturer uh, Poseidon bikes actually included on the chainstay here uh, a thin little bit of helicopter tape to prevent that from scuffing up, and it's been very helpful so far. Now, this bike does not come with a kickstand. Many bikes uh, do not these days. Um, many cyclists have found them heavy or in the way. I'm a little disappointed. I'm even more disappointed that there's no point on the bike to mount one if you would like. They don't have either the center mounting point for a uh, touring bike or even a place on the uh, chainstay to mount it either. Uh, I've had to make do, make do with a uh, little uh, handlebar stick from the stand that I bring with me, but it, uh, it's working. It's not the best solution. I've got to find out something better. Let's see some other things about this. Uh, it does come with a set of gravel tires. Uh, they are the Small Block 8s by Kenda. And, you know, I was a little worried about their rolling resistance. Is this going to be too much for rolling on pavement since I do a, a mix of pavement and off-road? Uh, but they have done very well. Uh, it was actually a surprise at how easily they rolled um, and uh, made things work pretty well. Mechanical disc brakes mean that they take a, a little bit more hand effort in order to close them, to use them, than a hydraulic brake would, but they work reasonably well, and it's what I had on my other bike. It's what I'm familiar with. Kind of like uh, knowing that the more force I apply, the more it's going to break. Some people would just like to feather a little bit, have them on and off. I prefer the kind of more analog feel, but maybe that would change if I got more comfortable with uh, hydraulic brakes. Now the Poseidon X does have a lot of brazons here that allow you to attach 
any sort of bottle cage. Um, there's three on the inside of the triangle, and there's actually one on the opposite side of the triangle underneath the, the down tube. Uh, and that allows you to attach a bottle underneath, which is very helpful if you're carrying fuel or if you want to put your, uh, your tools there. It all works out pretty well. As you'll see in just a moment, um, these are rack mounts on the back, and they are great for, as you would expect, installing a rack. Moving to the front of the bike here, uh, this is actually one of the parts that took me the longest to figure out how to um, get it to work. The, the front wheel was out of true when I received the bike. And that's part of why it's been a month since I started the assembly process. I had to learn how to true a wheel now, those of you who know how it's, it's not a very difficult process. It just took me a while to wrap my head around which spokes I needed to tighten and which I needed to loosen. Long term, it's a good piece of information to know, but uh, it took me a while. I even sent out an email at one point to Poseidon Bikes and said, hey, I'm having trouble with this front wheel out of true. Poseidon Bikes was actually very helpful. Uh, they told me that if I took it to a local bike shop and had them do the truing uh, and then sent the receipt into Poseidon, that they would reimburse me for whatever the truing cost. That was really kind, and I very much appreciate it. However, as soon as I got that email, it was right after I had trued the wheel myself. I'd actually managed to figure it out. And so it now rolls smoothly straight. Let's see some other things here. Um, the front rotor, when I received it, was a little bent out of true as well. On the, the mechanical disc brake there, I had to bend it back, but that wasn't too bad. was able to kind of eyeball it and get it into place, as well as adjusting as they show in their installation video. The front fork on the Poseidon X is made out of carbon fiber. Uh, it is uh, lightweight and helps to reduce the jostles and bumps that you'll get along the way, mostly the vibrations, I suppose. It does not have a front suspension, uh, which means that it's going to be a little bit harsher ride, but it saves a lot of weight by not having that front suspension. And as far as I can tell from riding it around town, I haven't experienced very much of a difference, which means that weight savings was worth it. These brown grips came with the bike. I'm going to leave those on for the moment. I do have a plan, vaguely, to maybe change the bars out at some later point. They're a little wide, even for me. I know I could cut them down, but, uh, you know, we'll see where they are. The other uh, concern I have with the stock configuration that I haven't been able to change yet is that the stem uh, is a little low. Um, if you want to have a more upright position while you're riding through the city or whatever, uh, it helps to have slightly more stem length and uh, this one just didn't have enough. But you can get stem extenders, and I plan on it. Uh, I may also swap out this handlebar set for a uh, butterfly bar at some point in the future when I get around to tinkering with it. But that's what I like about this. This is a perfect platform to tinker with. Uh, there's not a lot of complicated parts going with it. Well, this is the Poseidon X as it came from the manufacturer, uh, and as you can see, there's lots of things to change. So let's change a few of them, shall we? And here it is after all of the uh, changes that have been made. I do have a rear bag and the bottles to go in here, but I didn't bring them down to the uh, pond shore, as it were. Did, however, bring some of these. So as on my uh, previous bike, I do have a Topeak rear rack. Uh, this allows me to put the panniers on it. This is the Explorer model, uh, the Topeak Explorer rack, uh, and the EXP uh, is the trunk bag that goes on here that has the panniers that come down and strap around the rack. Very handy, that is. Two bottle cages um, here. Let me mount water. Uh, take it with me on the trip. I'm still waiting to get a half frame bag to fill this space, but I'm looking forward to getting that at some point. I have a top two bag that I'm still kind of choosing between two options for at the moment. On the front of the bike here, I have the uh, Topeak... Um, what is this? The, the tour guide, the Topeak tour guide, Mark II. Uh, and it's allowed a mounting point for my phone. So the phone can just go in there like so. And I can keep the charger in the tour guide. So I can have a battery pack up there and don't have to have the battery um, shaking around over here. Phone's waterproof, the battery isn't. This pack has a uh, rain cover to go over the top, give it some uh, waterproofing. And those are pretty much the changes. Uh, the other big one, of course, being the saddle. Changed out the uh, Poseidon saddle for, uh, saddle for a much nicer um, gel seat for myself to make things uh, traveling a little bit nicer for me. 
So this is my Poseidon X, not just the factory model, but the one that I have modified for myself. And I think I'm going to call this one Chiron, and I'll tell you why. First of all, it is the Poseidon Model X, and X in Greek uh, is chi, or chi, depending on what uh, pronunciation set you're using. Uh, so the chi in Chiron goes from that. Then uh, I'm being a little bit um, snarky, because Chiron was the famous uh, Greek centaur, half human, half horse, uh, that was a doctor and taught uh, arithmetic and rhetoric to many of the Greek um, rulers and leaders throughout the ages. Of course, that's all Greek myth. But as long as we're going to be in Greek myth, uh, it was also Poseidon, um, the name of the company that made this bike, that uh, introduced horses to humanity. So this half-human, half-horse Chiron and the X all combined to make one Chiron steed for me. I guess when I ride it, I'll be part of it as well. I'll be half human, half bicycle. <laughs> Maybe not. That sounds a little uncomfortable. In any case, I'm looking forward to taking my first gravel ride uh, on it today, or at least dirt path ride, and see what this is all about. So I hope you come with me for that, and uh, enjoy the, the few minutes here of what it's like to ride this bicycle. Thanks so much for coming with me on this journey. I'm Lucas Levy Keppel, and I look forward to many adventures in the future uh, putting all of this together. Stayed up. 